Okay, uh, so uh, last time we got into uh, chapter two, I believe, and uh, we were talking about um, stuff there. Uh, so uh, we were talking about measurements. So as we talked about last time, when you do take a measurement, you want to always look really at a couple of things on the piece of equipment, and it does change depending on the piece of equipment that you use. You really want to look at the scaling that you're using. Uh, so, for example, like we talked about, we've got some like. Uh, like a ruler. There's usually, again, on most pieces of equipment, sort of large markings and small markings. And as we can see in this case, uh, remember, we do want to actually start counting about here. And uh, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 markings between our large markings. Now, our large marking here is one centimeter. And because there's 10 smaller markings between it, you basically take one divided by 10. And that tells you that each of the smaller markings is basically 0.1 centimeters. Uh, so if we were measuring something like to here, um, what we would see is <clears throat> we would have some numbers here, which would be 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1 1.3, 1 1.4, and so forth. Okay, so I think that sounds better. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we, when we look at this, as we talked about, pretty much um, no matter who takes a look at it, everybody, there should be some numbers that everybody does agree upon. So again, in this particular case, everybody should agree upon it is at least 1.3. And you would want to record that. That's what all your certain numbers are. Now we could clearly see that is not 1.3, is not 1.4. And that's really where, again, as we talked about, sort of the estimation comes into play. Uh, there's really going to be always sort of a digit, if you will, uh, that's sort of uncertain or estimated. Now I may look at this and think, I think it's like, you know, dead on there and halfway through, and I would record five centimeters. And that would be what is sometimes referred to as the first uncertain number, or sometimes referred to as the estimated digit. And we do wanna record all those things, usually when we take a measurement, because that really does uh, refer to the significant figures. Uh, so this particular one here would have uh, basically three significant figures. Now, um, typically speaking, as we talked about, you can go usually one more place uh, to the right of the smallest digit. Uh, so the smallest marking is to the first decimal place. Uh, we typically can go one more place uh, to the right there. And that's what we could do here. Uh, if you're really not sure how far you should take it ever, you could if you could figure out what the smallest marking is, uh, you can simply divide it by two, and that's pretty much how far you should take the reading. Uh, not It won't equal five or anything like that, but you could take the reading to that many digits. Uh, we also talked about the importance, though, that if you were to, for example, hit directly on a number like 1.4, in this particular scaling, we would want to record 1.40, with the one and the four being the certain numbers, the zero being the uncertain number, and this would still have our three significant figures like the other one. Once again, if you just recorded 1.4, sort of lopped off that last zero, as we talked about, you pretty much made your measurement worse than it should be. Uh, and it would only actually have two significant figures where you would be saying, I think it's like 1.4, but it could be 1.5 or 1.3. So a lot more error. Uh, remember that when we do read a volume, we're looking at the curvature of the liquid, right? Which is the meniscus. And you want to read from the bottom of the meniscus always. And same thing, you do want to look at the scaling because it will be different perhaps. I ran out of graduated cylinder there. Let me build it a little bit bigger. Um, but again, if this was say milliliters, our big markings is 10 milliliters. And there's 10 markings in between, which means each one is one milliliter. Uh, which means you can typically go one more place to the right, which you could take the reading to the first decimal place. So that's the general rule, usually one more place to the right. Uh, we did see an example, I think, last time where you really couldn't do that, where it went by two, sort of the scale. 
Uh, but that's really why you want to make sure that you look at all the scales. Any questions on measurements there? <clears throat> we also, I think, talked about uh, just counting significant figures and how to count significant figures. Remember that all non-zero numbers are significant. When we talk about zeros, if they are leading zeros, they are not significant. So any zeros like these are not going to be significant. Remember, we don't start counting until we hit uh, the very first non-zero number going left to right. Uh, if you have uh, captive zeros or trap zeros, uh, they are significant. So if you had one zero zero four, those zeros there would be significant. Uh, so it would have four significant figures. And then we have the trailing zero, uh, which are the zeros that come at the end. And they may or may not be significant. And what determines if they are significant is, is there a decimal point in the number? So if there is a decimal point in the number, uh, then those zeros at the end would be significant. If there's not, then they would not. Uh, so if you have something like 12,000 with a little decimal right there, and if we put a zero here, uh, all these zeros now would become significant because there is a decimal point along with obviously the one and the two in this particular case. Um, if we had just say 12,000 with nothing written there, these guys would be significant and these guys here uh, would not be significant. So this guy would have two significant figures. Any questions on that? Uh, lastly, I think we also talked about scientific notation a little bit. Again, it's going to need to be a number between 1 and 10. Uh, and it has a general format of n times 10 to the n, where that is a number between 1 and 10. That is positive or negative, depending on uh, which way you move it. Uh, well, you write one of these as negative. There we go. Um, more importantly, we talked about your calculator and making sure that you use your exponent buttons, right? So remember that pretty much uh, these are the three exponent buttons on most calculators that you have. So you either have this or a combination, this guy or that guy, right? Any questions on any of that stuff we talked about last time? <clears throat> So then let's uh, continue on here. So as we just talked about there with our significant figures, um, we got uh, anything that's not a zero would be significant. So this guy's got two, this one's got five. Uh, zeros between are going to be uh, significant. So we got three here as those zeros are there. And again, these are our leading zeros, which would not be significant until we started counting at that four. So again, uh, pretty much uh, four significant figures, two, uh, three, and five, as we would start counting left to right always, and again, starting to count when we hit that first uh, non-zero number. And again, these guys are our trap zeros, which are significant as well. So those guys are going to be significant. So all four of those are significant. All three of those are significant. Here, we would not count the uh, two zeros there because we would not technically start counting until we hit the seven. And then that zero in the middle would be significant and that two would be significant. So those would be your three significant figures in that number. Uh, once again, here, we would not start counting until we hit the four. And then the rest of these guys here would all be significant. Uh, the four, zero, five, zero, five. Any questions on that? And then here's our ones at the end, again, uh, not significant. We're not going to assume that there's a decimal point there if it is not written, uh, especially when we're counting significant figures. Um, so it does need to be written for that. And here, that decimal point is written. So we do have all four of those being significant. I think we talked about it last time, but again, sometimes people uh, will think, well, you know, there's a decimal and these zeros come after, so they're significant again. We would not start counting until we got to that number there. Uh, so those would still be considered leading zeros, even though they do come obviously after the decimal point in that case. Any questions on there? <clears throat> okay. 
couple more examples. All right, so again here, uh, we have no decimals, so all these zeros here are not going to be significant. And the other thing that we did talk about in terms of significant figures and scientific notation is uh, whenever, whenever you see a number that's written in scientific notation, all the numbers before the time sent part are significant. Uh, so remember that all these would be significant. So that would have three significant figures, two significant figures, and a bunch of significant figures, five there. If the number is written in scientific notation, I think we might all have talked about this last time. A very common mistake that people will make is they will kind of take it out of scientific notation into a, say, decimal form and then kind of miscount the zeros and stuff like that. So uh, the way it's written in scientific notation is how many significant figures it should have. And if you do take it out of decimal place, um, or do take it out of scientific notation, it should still keep the same number of significant figures. Now, this, this is an example for here of one where if you wanted three significant figures, this would be the only way that you could actually achieve three significant figures. Um, because if we did take this out into decimal form, we would move the decimal three places this way, which would give us four, nine, zero, zero. And if I wrote it this way, how many significant figures would this number have? Two. So if I wanted to keep the three, if I put the decimal there, it would now have four, right? So there really is no way to get it to have three significant figures without writing in scientific notation. Uh, so that is an example there of that. <clears throat> Any questions on that there? Uh, so continuing on here, uh, we have uh, scientific notation. And again, we do not want to lose significant figures. So that is three significant figures on the left because it does have a decimal. And when we write in scientific notation, it still has three. This guy actually, again, only has one significant figure. So when we do transfer it over to scientific notation, we do not want to carry up all those zeros. Otherwise, we would have too many significant figures. Um, but we do need the zeros here when we transfer it to decimal form because otherwise four is very different than 400,000. So again, we need to keep it there. Uh, but when we transfer it over, we do not. Again, here, this would have two significant figures. So when we go into scientific notation, uh, we would keep our two significant figures. A reminder that... Um, when you do write a number of scientific notation, it does need to be between one and 10. So you should never write a number like point something times 10 to whatever, or 10 times something, or 100 times something. Again, it does need to be uh, a number between one and 10 here when we're talking about scientific notation. All right, so take a second here, identify the significant and non-significant zeros in each of the following. Okay, let's take a look. And let's first start with how many significant figures we got going on. So the first one here, how many significant figures does this one have? It does have four. Uh, we would not count any of these. We would start counting here at the two. The six, the five is significant. And again, the zero here would be significant at the end uh, because of the decimal point that is there. That means when we do write it in scientific notation, we do need to keep all four of those significant figures. Uh, and that would then give us, if we're moving our decimal, one place, two places, and three places, that would give us 2.650 times 10 to the one, two, negative three, as it's a small number. Again, it has four significant figures, which are these. It maintains its four significant figures when we turn it in here. Again, here, we would not drop the zero. Otherwise, we would end up with how many significant figures? We would end up with three significant figures if you drop to zero. Again, it wouldn't match. So you don't want to lose any significant figures as you go across there. Any questions on that one there? Coming to the next one has how many significant figures? Yeah, all of them are significant. Again, starting to count here, that is a trap zero. So in this case, uh, we do want to take the decimal place one place to the left, and that would give us 4.3026 times 10 to the one. Again, larger number has a positive exponent. And once again here, we do need to keep all these digits to maintain the right number of significant figures. 
Lastly here, uh, the last one has how many significant figures? It does have four. Starting to count here, that would be significant. That is a trap zero, which would be significant. These are significant. The three zeros here at the end are not significant because there is no decimal place written. Uh, so we do assume, though, in the case of turning it into scientific notation, that the decimal point would obviously be at the end. So that would be one place, two places, three places, four places, five places, and six places I need to move. And I would keep 1.044 times 10 to the six. And that would give me the proper number of significant figures. Any question on any of those there? <clears throat> So again, a really common mistake that people make is just that they sort of lose some significant figures as they go one way or the other. We also talked about, I think last time, and just a reminder, your calculator will not necessarily spit it out to you uh, in scientific notation unless you have a program to do so. Some numbers it will, because it doesn't have enough room to give it to you other ways, but um, remember, it does not give it to you in the right number of significant figures are necessary the scientific notation. All right, so there's all those there. All right, so what we've been talking about with significant figures and really taking measurements are obviously numbers that are considered uh, measured values. And there's another set of numbers which we do come across, which are referred to as exact numbers. And exact numbers are really things that are pretty much not measured. So uh, for example, if I had a number of these pens here on the desk, I'm not going to do some type of experiment to figure out how many pins I got. And it's going to simply count them. The classic chemistry example in most textbooks is you got a bucket of like apples. You're just going to count how many apples you have. More often, though, the way we do come across sort of exact numbers in chemistry is uh, they are sometimes definitions. And we talked a little about units, I think, at the beginning. And we'll talk a little bit more about it at the end. But there really is... Uh, these type of things like we see on the bottom, which is one foot is 12 inches. This is what is referred to as an equality. And equality basically is uh, two values that are on different scales, but they do represent the same amount. So when we say that that measures 12 inches or that measures one foot, it represents really the same amount of length, um, but they are on different units. So these type of things are considered exact numbers. Um, and what that means is technically speaking, they could have as many significant figures as you like. The good news about it is we're gonna talk about calculations here in just a second and use the significant figures. But uh, when you do come across something that's considered an exact number, um, you pretty much don't have to worry about it in terms of your calculations. So you kind of ignore it. Um, and a lot of times we'll use these as conversion factors that we'll talk about as well a little bit later on this chapter, but uh, we could turn these into two conversion factors like one foot over 12 inches or 12 inches over one foot. And we could do some type of calculation using one of those sort of conversion factors, which are just fractions. Now there's two types of units that we talked about. There's kind of the uh, English unit or the U.S. unit, and there's the metric uh, sort of unit. And technically speaking, if it is a conversion or a quality or definition that's an English to English sort of definition, like one foot is 12 inches, it's an exact number you don't have to worry about. If it's like a metric sort of conversion, like what we see down here, one kilogram is a thousand grams, it's an exact number. Now, technically speaking, though, if you do come across a conversion factor or a definition that kind of crosses over from metric to English, you actually should look at the uh, number. It's not really considered an exact number. Um, you know, so if you have something that sort of crosses over, and we'll talk a little bit more about it a little bit later on, I think, in this chapter, English to metric is usually not considered an exact number. There are some exceptions. One very common exception is uh, one inch is 2.54 centimeters exactly. So that's sort of a crossover unit. 
and that would also still be considered an exact number in that particular case. So exact numbers basically are achieved one of two ways, either through county or again, some type of definition. 100% of the time, English to English, uh, metric to metric, definitely exact numbers. Just gotta be careful sometimes when you cross over kind of metric to English, there's a few that uh, aren't really uh, considered exact numbers. Any questions on that there? All right, so uh, here we go. And here's again, some metric to metric conversions. These would all be considered exact numbers. These are all US to US or English to English sort of conversion. So those definitely would be considered exact numbers as well. So identify the number below as being measured or exact and give the number of significant figures in each measured one. If I have three coins, would that be measured or exact? It would be exact. Obviously you would just count how many coins you got. The diameter of a circle is 7.902 centimeters. That should be measured and significant figure wise it should have. It would have four significant figures. Again, all these would be significant starting the counting with the seven. 60 minutes is equal to one hour. That should be, that would be an exact or a definition in this particular case. Any questions on any of those there? Okay. So again, the difference here is technically speaking, this one and this one could have as many sig figs as you want. This one definitely has four as it has been measured. All right. All right, so starting with the first one, we should roll this way. We should not start counting until we hit the three. And is that last zero significant? The zero is, it is. So that would be two significant figures for this guy. The last two, the uncertain digit would be the zero, All right? Uh, here we would start counting. That's a trap zero, which makes it significant. Once again, this zero is going to be significant because of the decimal point that's there. So that is gonna give us four significant figures. Here, we would not count any of these zeros as they are all leading zeros. We do not officially start counting until we hit that eight. And that would give us only one significant figure. And lastly, here we have three significant figures. All of them would be significant uh, because of the decimal place. Any questions on that one there? All right, so take a moment here. Which answer contains three significant figures? Uh, which one is all the zero significant and the number of significant figures in 5.8 times 10 to here? Uh, how many significant figures does this one have? That's four, yes. This one has three and this one has Four. So it is number two, which I think someone was answering. It's a, a number two there has three significant figures, which would be the four, our seven, and the six. All right, we're looking for all the zeros are significant. Uh, so which one is all the zeros significant? Are all these zeros significant? They are not. These first ones aren't. Are all these zeros significant? They are, right? So the zeros at the end are. And are all these zeros significant? I'm going to say yes, baby. Those zeros would be significant, right? Because it would then have four significant figures. Yeah. So it's actually, I would say both of these, which should work in this particular case. I would say so. Question on that? <clears throat> this number here has how many significant figures? It does have three. Once again, looking at before the times 10 part would have three. Uh, which one are we talking about? The last one, if it didn't have the decimal, if it was again, uh, it wouldn't be written that way because when you write in a site of notation, it does have to be a number between one and 10. But if you just had a number written as 580, written like that, that has only two significant figures. So if you were to convert this into a decimal here, it would give you 580, but the proper way to write it would be to put a decimal at the end. That way you will have three significant figures here that matches the three significant figures that you started with. Yeah. Other questions? <clears throat> okay. 
All right. I see there was two answers. You you seem very shocked. There was two answers, but there's two answers. All right. Any questions on sig figs, counting sig figs, scientific notation? All right. Then let's talk about actually maybe, uh, let's say a more important thing, but a relatively important thing involving significant figures. And that is when we do calculations that involve significant figures. So there really is sort of two sets of calculations that we oftentimes would do. And one is either you're going to kind of multiply or divide. And when we multiply or divide, our answer should have the same number of significant figures as the number with the least number of sig figs. So if you're multiplying a bunch of numbers together, dividing a bunch of numbers together, when you do get your answer, you should round it to the same number of significant figures as whichever number in what you were calculating had the least number of significant figures. So if I took, uh, you know, 3.20 times 1.2 times 3.3659, I'm multiplying here. This first number has how many significant figures? Three. Next number has two. Last number has five. Your answer should have how many significant figures? It should have two significant figures. So when you do get your answer in this case, you should round it to two significant figures. I have a calculator. I'll give it the old college try. That's a lot of zeros. Let me try that again. There we go. Uh, 3.2 times uh, 1.2 times 33659 or and that gives me uh, again oh, I can't see that that gives me on my calculator 129250.56 that means I really should take it to two significant figures which would take me to which number take me to this number would be my second significant figure I then should look at the number next to it. It is a nine, which means I should really round up. And this should be something like one, three, zero, 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 zero. Or if I want to do a little scientific notation, 1.3 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five. Either one of those would be the correct answer based on significant figures. Question on that there. <laughs> So multiply or divide, or even if you do sort of a combination of both things, multiply and divide, uh, you're looking at significant figures and you're looking at the lowest, and that's how much your answer should have. Now, the other sort of grouping of calculations that we do would be adding and subtracting. So when we add and subtract, we actually do a little bit of a different approach than what we do when we multiply and divide. So when we add and subtract, which I'll just write up here, when we add or subtract, your answer should have the same number of decimal places as the number with the least number of decimal places. So this is different than multiplying and dividing. When you add and subtract, you're looking at actual decimal places and they're still the smallest. So if we were to add a bunch of numbers together or a few numbers, 1.222 plus 3.04, plus uh, like 1.7 and give it the college try without the calculator. That's like a two, that's like a six, that's like a nine, that's like a three, four, five. So that is the answer that you get there, yeah. What should the final answer be in this case? That is correctish yes so we're looking at decimal places here so this has three decimal places this has two decimal places 
This has one decimal place, which means we really should bring it here to this one decimal place. Again, to round here, we would look at the number next to it, which is a six. So we would round up, which would take our nine to a zero and then take our five to a six. But we should record it at really as 6.0, right? That still takes it to one decimal place. It should not be confused, though, because that has one decimal place. But how many significant figures? Two, which might be important if you use it on with another calculation uh, down the road. So multiply and dividing significant figures. The least number of significant figures is what your answer should have. Adding, subtracting, it's the least number of decimal places is what your answer should have. The reason it's the least is, frankly, that is your crappiest measurement in most cases. So your final calculation really is only as good as your worst measurement, kind of like the weakest link, right? You're not as good as the weakest link. So if you have kind of a group of numbers or sort of measurements, uh, the best that you could do is, you know, as worst, as best as your worst measurement that you have there. What happens if I had something like uh, 13.2 plus uh, 12? So I add that up, right? I got a two, I got a five, and I got a two. Where should I take it to? Yeah, so this has one decimal place. This one has none. That is the smallest, right? A whole number, no decimal places. So you would take it to the whole number in this case, yeah? So, you know, if you have a number that doesn't have decimal places, that would be the least number of decimal places, and that's really where you should take it to. Any questions on that? Oh, that's up there. I thought it was like over in this area. <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> I'm like, I'm hearing voices, but nobody's mouse moving in this general area over here. All right. Uh, any questions on that there? All right. Let's talk a little bit about rounding. Calculator answers uh, usually will get rounded off. Normal rounding rules apply. So our normal rounding rules is if the number next to where you want to stop is uh, less than five, we pretty much just kind of drop the numbers. Uh, if the number next to where you want to stop is five or more, then we do round up like we did in a couple of those examples. Uh, so, for example, here, if we had uh, 13,333 and I want uh, like uh, two significant figures, what should it be? Should it be 13? Should it be 13,000? Should it be a question mark or maybe two? Because I want two significant figures or two question marks. That is not what we want, right? All right, so let's start with sig fig wise here. This one has how many sig figs? Right, this one has. That's a, that's, wow, that's like a lot of numbers. <laughs> Slow down here. All right. So let's see. This is uh, significant there. That's significant. Zeros at the end are significant or not in this case? They're not because I didn't write a decimal, right? If I laid up a decimal at the end, it would be significant. All right. So they both actually do have two significant figures, right? Now, when you do round, and sometimes people do like what I like to call extreme rounding because they're so focused on giving the right number of significant figures, which, you know, you should, uh, that they just, you know, that's all they focus on. So, for example, there's a very big difference, right? If I owed you $13,333 and I go, hey, I'm just going to pay you two significant figures. Here's $13, right? I'm not going to make it out of the room. Maybe I would. You guys look very nice, you know, nice people. But maybe I may not make it out of the room in that case. So there's a really big difference between the two values of the numbers. So although this does have two significant figures, you never want to really change the meaning of it. Now, if I owed you $13,333 and I gave you $13,000, you know, that's essentially the same value. And maybe I get the $333 teacher discount, which, you know, you should get and all that good stuff. Uh, but again, we really didn't want to change the meaning. So it happens a lot when people are doing problems. Again, they're focusing on getting the right sig face, which you should do. And they kind of take it too extreme on the rounding part. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't uh, do that. Any questions on that there? 
By the way, with my 13,000 right there, which one would be the estimated digit or the uncertain digit? So because it has two significant figures, right? We would start counting here. This would be one significant figure. This would be two. The actual uncertain digit was the three in this case, right? Uh, that is basically what the significant figures means since it only has two. The first one certain, second one is where the uncertainty lies. So again, a reminder, as we talked about, I think last time, remember that the estimated digit or uncertain digit a lot of times it is the last number that's written, but it's really not, that, that's really not the definition. The definition is really the last significant figure that's written. So a lot of cases that is the last number, but it's not always. And this would be, again, an example of that. Any questions on any of that there? So let's say, uh, by the way, that we uh, maybe did a combination of stuff, like we decided we want to go, uh, 32.5 times 12.440, and then we want to divide it by 3.246. Give the answer to the right number of significant figures, and then we'll do one more. Why not? Let's do one more here. I'm just going to erase this. Okay, let's take a look. So order math operation, we do things in parentheses first, right? So in this case, we're multiplying. So we would take 32.5 times 12.440. Uh, that gives us, I believe, a number on our calculator, 404.3. Technically speaking at this point, I am multiplying. So am I looking at significant figures or decimal places? I am. And how many significant figures should that number technically have at this point? It really should have, I think I heard three. <laughs> that has three. This one has five, which means really that number that we got for just the top part technically should really kind of stop there, right? So we can then take the top number and divide it by the bottom number. And a lot of times you don't really want to round to the very end and kind of clean it up until the very end. Um, and we divide it by the bottom number. And if we do that, we will end up with uh, on the calculator, one, two, four point five, five, three, two, nine, six, four, if I wrote everything. But the last thing that we did was divide, right? Which means we're going to still look at significant figures. So uh, top number has three significant figures, technically. Bottom number has four significant figures, which means my answer should end up with how many? Should end up with three significant figures, which takes me to here, which means I should round it to a buck 25, yeah, which would be three significant figures. So a couple of things. Uh, in terms of rounding, if you're doing multiple steps, it's really a good idea not to round to the very end. You should definitely keep track of significant figures as you're doing the calculations. The reason for that is, for example, if you did a, a little bit longer of a calculation, you did the first calculation, got the answer, took it, and then got the answer for the next calculation, rounded, got the next answer, rounded, and so forth. Every time you round, you're really going to probably be moving yourself away from the right answer. Uh, so you really should avoid rounding to the very end and kind of clean everything up at the end. But you definitely should, like we did here, keep track of kind of what happened step by step. And it's really a lot of times the last step that you do that sort of determines, you know, where you should end up. But all the previous steps are also important uh, to keep track of, obviously, the sig figs. Any questions on that? Yeah. I did. Personally, if I was to do this problem, I just left the number of my calculator and continued on with it. But again, you do want to kind of to, uh, keep it up. I would say that's probably a good rule of thumb on most calculations that you do. Um, if you don't want to, uh, you don't really want to round it to the right number of significant figures till the end, but if you want, you could do one or two things here, keep the whole number of calculator, or if you're going to write it down, take it to a couple extra digits past where you really should stop, and then that usually will still let you be okay as you continue on. So, you know, uh, if you had a really long number, you didn't want to kind of write the really long number, but you want to continue on, uh, figure out where you should really stop sig fig wise and just maybe take one or two or two 
uh, after that and you should be in an okay place. Yeah. Other questions? So here we're gonna first do the division, right? So we're gonna divide, which means we are going to look at significant figures. And that means top number has how many significant figures? Four. Bottom number has, I'll trust you, that's a lot, Jeez, six. Uh, so four, six, three, eight, divided by one, two, six, 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 seven. And that gives you this number, I'll write it up on top, 0 0.03661593, technically speaking, as the answer for the left part here, right? Now, that answer really should end up where? Should end up with how many significant figures? Four, which would take us to here. Yeah, that is the four significant figure. <laughs> I'll agree with that. That's the four significant figure. So technically speaking, we really are taking 0 0.03662, right? And then we're going to now add it to 1.2. I'm going to try it without the calculator at this point. Let's see here. So that's going to give me 1.23662, I hope. Yes, if you add that together. Now, where should we end up? Last thing we did was adding, right? And when we add, we should look at what? We should look at decimal places, right? So technically speaking, if we took this to the right number of decimal places, it's actually got five, right? And this guy has one, which means our final actual actually should end up at one. Yeah, so it actually end up in my made up number still at 1.2 in this case, which has one decimal place and two significant figures, right? So you would want to again, follow it kind of step-by-step. Step. My recommendation is, like I said, you know, sort of keep track of where you should be taking it. Again, I probably won't do too much rounding to the end, but it is sort of, even if you kind of combo some different mathematical operations together, you want to follow the normal order, which is usually things in parentheses first or multiplying first or dividing then adding or subtracting and hopefully I help. Any question? Yeah. I, I did in this case, and even if I didn't use the round number, it wouldn't change in this particular case. So um, even if you roll with the other one, it would just be 1.236615 and all the bunch of it, which would all get rounded off at the end because at the end we were adding. Other questions? <clears throat> okay. All right. Fun with rounding. All right. So let's. All right. So look at the first one. We're going to go three sig figs, which should take us to the four. And then looking at the five means we should then round up. So we should end up with 3.15 and not forget to put the units, which are grams in this case. Yeah. Any questions on that one? Taking us to two significant figures. Uh, that is going to take us actually to the one. Looking at the four, we then should do what? We should, then we should drop the rest of it, right? So it would be 3.1 grams. Yeah. Any questions on that one there? <clears throat> Yes, yeah. All right, adjust the following calculated answers. Again, calculator doesn't give it to you the right number of sig figs. We're looking for three sig figs in each of these cases. Okay, uh, so three sig figs on the first one, gonna take us to the four. We wanna look at the seven, so we do wanna round up. Uh, that will give us 825 centimeters. We could have also, if we wanted to do a little scientific notation on this one, we could have did 8.25 times 10 to the two centimeters, which would also be three significant figures. Yes. Any question on that one there? <laughs> three significant figures on the next one takes me to which number? It is the two. We're gonna look at the four. I mean, we're going to drop it. Uh, that would give us 0 0.112 two grams why would i not leave the last ones and just make them zeros 
Yeah, they would say significant, and he would have obviously more than three in that particular case. We also could do a little scientific notation on this one as well, 1.12 uh, times 10 to the minus 1 grams if we wanted to. Lastly here, we're looking for three significant figures here. So clearly that only has how many to start with? Two. So we got two options here. We can, uh, really one option, I guess. We need to actually add a zero there at the end, right? And by adding the zero at the end, now I do have three significant figures and there's really no change in really the meaning of the number, obviously, by adding that zero. Uh, we wouldn't obviously do scientific notation on something like this because it is just five, basically 5.3. Any question on any of those there? <clears throat> All right. So we talked about multiplying and dividing. Again, make sure that you keep track. So when we look at this particular example here, uh, that is two significant figures. That is four significant figures. That means the top technically should have two significant figures. We then divided it by this number on the bottom that has three significant figures. And that means that our answer should end up with two significant figures, uh, which is how we get to that number there. Any question on that one there? All right, again, a reminder, you may have to add some zeros uh, based on your calculator answer, or again, maybe write in scientific notation as it may not give you the correct number of significant figures. So obviously we did eight divided by two in your calculator and most people's calculator is just gonna lay up a four. If I just wrote four, that is only one significant figure, which is not what we need. In this case, we actually need three. So again, we do actually have to add some zeros here to do that. Um, and again, that does very commonly happen. Here, we're going to look at uh, five times uh, 3.408. That gives you on your calculator 17.04. By the way, what are the units up there on top of? I just said there are centimeters squared, right? Because that is centimeters times centimeters gives you centimeters squared up on top. Uh, Technically speaking, then we would divide by this number, but before we get there, sig fig wise, what should our answer go to up on top? It should go to three based off of the first number. That has three significant figures. That has four significant figures, uh, which means technically speaking, it should go to there. We're then going to divide it by the two, and on our calculator, we end up with 8.52. By the way, where the units end up being now? just centimeters as one of them will cancel, right? You divide it, you end up with centimeters. We're dividing here, which means we should still be looking at sig figs. Really the top number is three sig figs based on the top calculation. Bottom number is two, which means this guy should end up at two. So that's like an 8.5 centimeters, yeah. Question on that. Again, here, personally, I, I didn't round at this point. I just took the top number and divided by the smallest bottom number at that point. But I did keep track of it along the way there. Any questions on that there? So it's important to keep track of your significant figures. Also, like this one demonstrates, also important to keep track of the units and what they become or change as you're doing it. That's good, they agree, except that I don't agree with their answer in terms of units. <laughs> that point shouldn't be that. All right, so it should be that. Uh, the textbook, what are you gonna do? All right, so uh, we talked about this again, adding here in this particular case, uh, it is the least number of decimal places. So that has one, and that is why they took the answer there to one decimal place uh, when we do add it together. Same thing here, if you're subtracting, once again, this is one decimal place, should take us to one decimal place. We do need to round because of the nine that we do see there. All right, so what do you get on this deal? Okay, so when you punch this into your calculator, you get hopefully 104.409. We also wanna make sure we take our units down with it, and it should be milligrams in this case. In this case, we are adding, so we're going to be looking at decimal places. So we got uh, three decimal places there. Uh, we got one decimal place there. 
which means we should end up with one decimal place here in our answer. That's going to give us 104.4 milligrams. Has one decimal place, but how many significant figures in this case? It does have four significant figures. Again, that would be important if you're going to take that number maybe and do some multiplication or division with it. Question on calculations involving significant figures. Um, <clears throat> any questions on that there? No. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about then is a little bit about prefixes and equalities here. And prefixes are oftentimes used uh, with the metric system to help us with sort of larger numbers, smaller numbers, so there are not so many zeros sort of happening. Equalities, as we just talked about a little bit earlier, are guys uh, where, again, uh, they are on different units, but represent the same amount of something like uh, 12 inches is one foot, 100 pennies equals $1, right? So it represents the same amount of money. Uh, equalities are really important, as we'll talk about doing dimensional analysis or problem solving. Uh, we use them for um, conversion factors. And a lot of times we do use prefixes in problems as really conversion factors as well. So a couple important relationships, uh, one that we do see a lot is kilo, which is a thousand. Uh, so one kilometer is equal to 1000 meters and one millimeter is equal to 0 0.001 meters. So from this particular equality, we really can write, as I mentioned earlier, uh, two types of conversion factors. And conversion factors are really just fractions. So I could say then one kilometer up on top, there's 1,000 meters on the bottom, or in 1,000 meters, there is one kilometer. And so, for example, if we were doing some type of calculation where we had, say, uh, 5.6, Five point six meters, and I want to know, you know, how many kilometers that was, right? We could set this up and use these conversion factors, are a part of the conversion factor to help us do that. One way that we show calculations here in, cal in chemistry is through what is referred to as dimensional analysis, and that's a process where we show really the units canceling each other out. So we would start with five point six meters. And the idea here is we're going to use one of these fractions basically to cancel out the units. So here at 5.6 meters, although it's not really written as a fraction, the units of meters are really up on top. And whenever you're doing any type of conversion factor or conversion, it's always opposites cancel. So to get rid of the meters, we would want to put the actual meters on the bottom and keep kilometers up on top, which means we would want to use this as our conversion factor to do so. Up on top would go one kilometer, on the bottom would go 1,000 meters. What we're doing mathematically when we set it up like this is whatever numbers are up on top, we're going to actually multiply in terms of the math. And then we're going to come back and divide by whatever numbers are basically on the bottom. So in terms of the units, because meters are up on top and meters are on the bottom, those units will cancel because essentially what we're doing is dividing meters divided by meters, which equals one. It's the same idea if you took four divided by four, it equals one, or two divided by two equals one. If you have the same unit up on top and you're dividing it by the same unit on the bottom, they basically cancel each other out, they become one, and that's how we basically cancel out the units. Now, the kilometers which are up on top will not cancel because they're on top, there's nothing canceling them out on the bottom. So we would multiply here basically 5.6 times one and hit equals. We then would come back and divide it by a thousand. And this will give us on our calculator 0 0.0056. The only unit that's left here are kilometers. And that technically is a dimensional analysis, problem solving, conversion type of problem, the way that you want to set it up. 
first off, any question on setting that up there? Now let's talk about significant figures and what we just sort of came across in this problem. First off, when I look at this conversion factor that came from this equality, this guy right here, is this a measured or exact number? That would be considered an exact number, which means we do not need to worry about it in the calculation. We pretty much ignore its existence in terms of significant figures we don't have to worry about. That pretty much means the only number we have that we should worry about is the original number, right? And the original number had how many significant figures? And my answer ended up with two. So that would be the proper number of significant figures. So a lot of times when you do use these conversion factors, a lot of them will be exact numbers and you don't have to worry about it. Probably not 100% of the time, but you know, like nine times out of 10, maybe eight and a half times out of 10. If you're doing nothing more than maybe a conversion problem or using conversion factors to get to something converted to some other unit, probably most of the time, the original number is probably pretty close to the right number of significant figures that you should have. Because when we do these type of operations like this, which is dimensional analysis here, pretty much the only operation we're doing is multiplying and dividing, which means we always look at sig figs and it's always the smallest number. Any questions on that? All right, a little preview of conversions for next time. Yeah. Any questions on anything we talked about here today? What's that? Could you put it into scientific notation? You you could. Uh, you would be uh, five point six times ten to the minus three kilometers, and that would get you your two significant figures. Either one would be fine. Uh, again, like we talked about, I think last time, uh, you don't necessarily has to give every answer in scientific notation. You can if you want to, uh, but again, there are some cases where the only way to get it to the right number sig figs uh, is that scientific notation. 